Hello and welcome to Denver and the 182nd Annual Meeting of the Acoustical Society of America. I am Larry Frum, Senior Press Officer for the American Institute of Physics and your host for today. We have three press conferences today to talk about the amazing science of acoustics. Uh, but first, we'll be homing in on shooter locations in an urban environment and checking out noises from coral reefs. Our first presentation, however, focuses on our insides. Uh, Rohit Singh from the University of Kansas and his team developed a method that combines a low power laser with ultrasound to remove arterial plaque safely and efficiently. And the technology can do so much more. Rohit? Good morning, everyone. I am Rohit Singh. I am a mechanical engineering PhD student in University of Kansas. And I would like to thank Larry and other people from, from press for giving me this opportunity to present our research work. And I am going to present on our recent research work in which we used combined ultrasound and laser to remove atherosclerotic plaque. All, this, uh, all these experiments were conducted in our lab under guidance of my advisor, Dr. Shinmai Yang. Uh, here is some introduction about the research work. Atherosclerosis is a disease in which arteries hardens and narrows due to buildup of plaque, fat, cholesterol, calcium, and other substance. And this mass of fat, cholesterol, calcium, and other substance is known as plaque. Plaque can develop in arteries of heart, brain, arms, legs, and even kidney. However, when the arteries supplying blood flow to heart and brain are affected with plaque, it is more dangerous as if the blood flow to the heart or brain is disrupted, it can result in stroke. Currently, there are medications for controlling atherosclerosis. We have cholesterol-lowering medications, blood thinners, and blood pressure medications. In case of severe atherosclerosis, surgical procedures are performed. In case of coronary artery, which supplies blood flow to the heart, stunt stunting is performed, in which a metal stunt is placed at the blocked artery to open it up. If uh, coronary artery is affected with severe atherosclerosis, then uh, bypass surgery is performed. And in case of carotid artery, which supplies blood flow to brain, and our terectomy procedure is performed in which the plaque is removed surgically. However, these uh, surgical procedures have their own limitations. In case of stunting in coronary artery, uh, it has high recurrence rate. It, uh, the recurrence rate is up to 10% even with the use of advanced metal stunts. And f for bypass surgery and and our terectomy surgery, they are highly invasive procedure. Apart from these common procedures, there are some procedures which are under development, like excimer laser coronary angioplasty, in which a laser is used to ablate the atherosclerosis plaque. Even due to its uh, good results, this is very rarely used in clinics because it uh, causes complications like coronary dissection and perforation due to use of high laser fluence. And there are some studies which have used ultrasound to ablate atherosclerosis plaque. And in our research work, we have used ultrasound along with laser to disrupt the atherosclerosis plaque. In this technique, the role of laser is to induce a micrometer uh, bubble and ultrasound is used to drive that bubble which mechanically breaks the clot, breaks the plaque. The plaque has generally two components. It has lipid core and fibrous tissue. If the lipid core is small and the fibrous cap is thick, then the plaque is stable and it is not dangerous. However, if the lipid core is large and fibrous cap is thin, then the plaque can rupture and result in stroke. So the main dangerous component is lipid core, and we focused our treatment to abrupt the lipid core. 
We performed experiment on carotid artery plaque samples. These were obtained from patients uh, undergoing carotid and and arterectomy procedure, and we only treated the lipid-rich mass. However, due to limited number of plaque samples, we first performed experiment on lipid tissues. And here is the experimental setup. The sample was placed in water at the focal spot of ultrasound, and laser was also focused to the same region using a convex lens. And delay generator was used to synchronize both ultrasound and laser system. And first, uh, both laser and ultrasound were synchronized, and then treatment was performed. And a half megahertz ultrasound transducer and 532 nanometer laser was used for the treatment. And uh, uh, the experiment we performed on lipid tissues, we found that when only ultrasound of 2.45 megapascal was used for treatment, no effect was visible. And when laser of 50 millijoule per pulse was used, no treatment effect was visible. However, when combined ultrasound and laser were used, a lot of fat was disrupted and removed. After these uh, experiment, we performed experiment on carotid artery plaque samples. These samples are uh, obtained from human carotid arteries during carotid and arterectomy procedure. And we got this from Department of Neurosurgery at KU Medical Center. And all the patient information related to the plaques was removed. And uh, we have two major components here. The yellow portion is the lipid, and the rest is the fibrous tissue. And this is a sample of, the, of our treatment where we used combined ultrasound and laser, and we can see that the lipid is removed after the treatment, whereas there is no effect on the fibrous tissue. Uh, we performed multiple treatments using ultrasound and laser. Our ultrasound pressure of 5.5, 5.4 megapascal, and laser energy of 50 millijoule per pulse was used, and treatment was uh, done using 18,000 pulses. Out of the four treatments conducting using combined ultrasound and laser, in all four of them, uh, around 40 to 70 percent of the lipid area was ablated, whereas in case of laser only, there was no effect on lipid area. And in case of ultrasound, less than 20% of lipid area was removed. And uh, from these studies, we can summarize that the experiment we performed on lipid tissue, we found that when combined ultrasound and laser is used, uh, it's the more area is removed as compared to ultrasound alone and laser alone. Uh, and in case of carotid artery plaque sample, when combined ultrasound and laser is used, a significantly higher lipid area is affected as compared to ultrasound alone and laser alone. And uh, in, ca in case of carotid artery plaque treatment, uh, around 40 to 70% of lipid area was affected when combined ultrasound and laser was used, whereas there was no effect on the fibrous tissue. And we would like to thank Department of Neurosurgery at KU Medical Center for providing the carotid artery plaque samples. And this is all about my research work. Thank you. Thank you, I'm Rohit. ready for questions. Actually, we do have a couple of early questions. Um, one is asking, does this technology require any special training on the part of the clinician? So uh, when it comes to uh, uh, training, so right now the Eximer laser uh, angioplasty technique that is used in clinics. So if person who is able to work with Eximer laser coronary angioplasty can also work with this technique because the, uh, the laser will be uh, uh, provided using the same way as in ELCA and ultrasound can be applied non-invasively from outside. And it might be a little early to tell. Obviously the, the combined technique I does work better than the individuals, but does this procedure reduce the instances of plaque rebuilding? It's hard to say right now because this is the this is our first uh, study to test uh, 
whether the technology is working or not. After the in vivo studies, we will be able to say if uh, this is going to uh, prevent plaque rebuilding or not. How many, how long did the research take? Uh, uh, how long, you mean the experiment yeah. takes? So it, it depends, right, uh, for the uh, experiment we conducted right now, for one treatment it takes like 15 to 30 minutes. However, the pulse repetition frequency was only 10 hertz, which is pretty low. In case of excimer laser, the pulse repetition frequency is up to 80 or 100. So if we used 100 uh, repetitions instead of 10, then it will become 10 times faster. Sure. So it depends on the type of laser you're using. Any questions from our web audience? And for those, of, uh, those who don't know, we are streaming this live, so there are questions coming in from all over the world. Yeah, we have one from Rick Lovett. Uh, how is this done in a clinical setting? How does the laser pulse reach the plaque? Is it inserted in an artery? Yeah, so the laser pulse reaches plaque through a catheter, and this is clinically used uh, right now uh, in a procedure called ELCA, or excimer laser coronary angioplasty, in which a catheter is inserted and that catheter delivers energy to the plaque. And whereas the ultrasound can be applied outside, from outside from the body. Any other questions? Okay. Anything from in the room? Yes, we do have a studio audience. Anything? Thank you so much, Rohit. All right, thank you, Larry. We're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back with our second presentation. <laughs> 